Hello. Good afternoon. Looks like our participants are coming in. We want to say good afternoon to everybody this afternoon. Um, we appreciate you at sharing some time today with us. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started in about a minute or two so more folks can join us. So stay tuned. Good afternoon, all. So we're just going to get started in a minute. Um, we are wondering where everybody is zooming in from today. We appreciate your time in joining us and just want to know what, um, where you're at in what state, country, or even the world. You can reply in the chat feature to all panelists and attendees. I see a student that's from Texas, San Francisco, China, Wisconsin, Indonesia, hi, East Bay representing, awesome, keep replying. San Diego, what, what? Okay, Stephanie Elizabeth, are we ready to get the show on a road in Sacramento? Yes. I think we're ready. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome. Oh, South Korea. Very, very cool. Um, well, we'll go ahead and get started. And as folks um, come in, um, we are excited just to create this community today in the online web uh, feature format. Um, my name is Honora. I am the, an academic advisor, uh, a part of the undergraduate academic programs team from the Dean's office. Awesome. So congratulations on making it to our webinar. Before we um, get started today, there are just a few things about Zoom um, and the webinar platform that we're using that I just want to uh, point out to you. You'll probably want to play around with Zoom. So the first thing you should know if you don't already is as attendees, your video is off. Um, so everyone is unable to see you. You're only likely to see myself or Stephanie or Elizabeth. Um, we ask that you use the Q&A function to ask questions. Um, we will be having a good portion of time to engage with you and get um, as many questions answered as possible today. So this will help us keep a record of the questions asked. So please use the Q&A feature. 
We also have some advising staff working behind the scenes today to answer your questions. Um, just so you know, attendees may see the questions and answers, but you can also ask your questions anonymously if you prefer. Um, we will not be using the raise your hand function, and we prefer not to use the chat function to answer questions today. So remember to use the Q&A, and as presenters, we may be using the chat function to send out websites or group messages to all attendees. And I'm going to also have um, the staff that are featured on the chat function just say hello to everybody as well. And I will pass it over to Stephanie and Elizabeth. I'm going to make sure that I unmute myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Myers. I am the primary advisor for the food science program at UC Davis. I grew up in Vallejo, California. So if any of you are from the Bay Area, definitely shout out in the chat message box. Um, I started my undergraduate degree at Napa Valley College before transferring to UC Davis and completing my Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in Human Development and Psychology here. When I'm not at work, I enjoy cooking and swimming, Netflix, and my cat, Partial. Um, I also want to share that I am a huge Harry Potter fan. I took the Hogwarts house quiz and I became a Ravenclaw, so um, I'm really excited about that. Fun fact, my Patronus is a white and black cat, which is one of the reasons why I adopted uh, Partial. So that's a little bit about me. I'm going to transition over to Elizabeth. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Price. I'm the undergraduate academic advisor for Viticulture and Knowledge D. Um, so just a little bit about me and my little collage that I have here. Um, so in the corner, you can see my graduation cap. I actually graduated from Cal State LA. I'm not going to tell you what year because then you'll guess how old I am. Um, but you'll also see below there a little like path that seems to wind around a lot. That's kind of like my path through my educational and career experience. Some people have these really straight lines and my path is, oh, I just went in a whole bunch of different directions before I got to the point that I'm at now. But I think it's kind of important to highlight just because I know a lot of you are um, starting off, you know, in your education. Um, there's a lot of opportunities there. And I think you can go in a lot of diff different directions and you can get into different places and it's all it's all good. So um, I always like to share that with students. And um, my cat is in the picture uh, on the bottom. She's all black. She is my little Halloween cat. Halloween is as far as I'm concerned, the best holiday ever. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm a Hufflepuff through and through. I have, I think my patroness is actually a stoke, which is kind of an otter-like creature, which is great because when you're at Davis and the Arboretum, you might actually see my patroness, a river otter. <laughs> and my favorite ice cream flavor is ube. It's like a red bean ice cream and it's delicious. And the bottom picture, you'll see my favorite place in probably all of California. Um, it's Point Reyes National Seashore. It's actually not that far away from Davis, which is really nice. If you're from out of state and you haven't really spent that much time in California, I definitely recommend you taking the time to um, drive or get there somehow. And if you ever want to talk to me about like the best beaches or the most beautiful places or where to see the tool, tool elk, um, I'll be happy to talk to you about it all day and every day. <laughs> I have to remember the mute. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I, at this time, I would like to introduce our peer advisor um, for food science. Her name is Maihan Nguyen. Maihan, can you join us right now? Um, I'm trying to start my video, but it says the host has stopped it. Mm, okay. Well, we can hear your voice. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. My name is Mahan, and I'm a rising senior in the food science department. And I'm also the food science peer advisor. So a little bit about how I got myself into the food science department at UC Davis. Um, I'm a huge foodie. So back then, I liked watching a lot of Food Network and Alton Brown, Unwrapped. Um, I was also really curious about like the ingredients in my food. So I liked looking at nutrition labels. So um, when it came time to apply to colleges, I wasn't really sure. Oh, OK. I think I can start my video now. Woohoo! <laughs> so when it came time to apply to colleges, um, I knew that I was going to go into some STEM field, but like, I know that I wasn't really passionate about like life science or engineering. Um, I guess when I applied, like I kind of applied to nutrition programs, public health programs, but then I came across the food science program at UC Davis and it looked super cool. I never heard of food science before. Um, did a little bit of research and I found out that the food science program at UC Davis is actually one of the top programs of its kind in the nation. So we're like competing with Cornell, which is like an Ivy League. Uh, so that's super cool. So this major is like the reason why I chose to attend Davis. Um, Honestly, my freshman year, I wasn't really sure what food science was, but now I've really come to appreciate it for what it is, because, you know, all the safe, convenient, and variety of food that you see in the convenience stores, it's because of food scientists. And right now, we have, like, plant-based meats and all these cool research um, happening in the food science field. So, I mean, it's a really cool time to study food science. Thank you, Maihan, for that introduction. Um, one of the things that you mentioned is just sort of not really knowing what food science is. And I imagine there may be some of you out there who might have similar questions. And so with that, I am going to actually ask you a polling question. <laughs> um, now that you know a little bit about us, we would like to know a little bit about you. And so, one of the questions that we have is, please tell us a little bit about yourself by selecting the statements that apply to you. I, um, are you an incoming freshman, incoming transfer student? Are you a California native or out of state? Are you a first generation college student? Um, you should be seeing a poll right about now. Thank you. Ooh, this is exciting. This is where we get to know about you guys. Ooh, we got some transfers. Mm -hmm. We have some California natives. We have some, we have a good mix of people that are out, um, out of state or out of the United States. Mm -hmm. And we have some first generation college students. Woo, 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 woo. That's me. <laughs> All right. And so now we're sharing the results. I guess, I, guess, I guess it shows the majority where a majority of our attendees are incoming freshmen. That's not necessarily that surprising, but welcome everybody. It's great to actually get to see how diverse all of our students are. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna close this poll. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks for that poll, everybody. Um, we'll be doing polls throughout our presentation just to find new ways to engage with you. Um, so as you can see, um, your CAES network of support, um, you know, when we ask that you come and join as a student in the College of Ag, we want you to know that you have a wide network of support that is going to be here to welcome you in the fall, um, which includes major advisors who can help answer those major specific questions like what classes should I be taking? How do I get involved in the major? And what research opportunities are available in my major? You also have the UAP Dean's Office, which I'm a part of too, um, who can help you explore different majors, answer questions about university experience, university general education and college requirements, and any other general questions that you may have. 
Although we specialize in certain areas, major advisors and the UAP Dean's Office can connect you with campus resources and introduce you to co-curricular opportunities so that you can get involved in the major or the college. You may also work with faculty advisors in your major um, who are experienced um, faculty and professors that can help tailor your major and your goals to your interests. Um, and peer advisors who um, we have on, um, on our webinar today, which is awesome, who are current UC Davis students as well. In the end, we're all here to help you navigate your academic career. Please do not be afraid to ask for help as you begin your educational journey and experience here at UC Davis. Now, um, I'm gonna pass it over fully to Stephanie and Elizabeth, and we're gonna be talking about the food science technology and the viticulture and knowledge major. Thank you, Hanora. So um, for the portion of this presentation, I am going to spend the next 10 minutes just explaining a really brief overview about the major, the course requirements, some of the career pathways that are available to food science students, um, and additional opportunities that are available for students who are involved, or for student involvement on campus. Um, again, if you have any questions as I go along, please feel free to uh, write your questions in the Q&A and we will answer them at the, um, in the live Q&A session at the end of the presentations. For the viticulture and enology students, uh, your presentation will be after this one. Um, and so if, there, if you wanna get up and move around, that's fine. A lot of this information right now is um, more relevant to food science students. Okay. Um, so I have another poll question for you. Um, this one has created many a debate. Does pineapple belong on pizza? A, yes, absolutely, or B, nope, not on my pizza. Let's get that poll started. <laughs> Okay. All right, so it looks like the majority of you absolutely love pineapple on your pizza. I'm sorry, I don't know if I could do it. I don't like pineapple on my pizza. I love pineapple, I love pizza. I'm not sure I could do them both together. Um, but thank you so much for answering this poll. Um, there's usually a lot of events that we host in the department. There's usually a lot of pizza. And so this is gonna help inform us of some of the things that you like in the future. Okay. So moving along, I wanted to talk a little bit about what is this food science and technology. And they are essentially two separate things, but you combine together, they make up this major. And so the way I explain it to students is that Food science is everything in between agriculture and nutrition. It uses chemistry, microbiology, engineering, and the other sciences to study the principles underlying the processing and deterioration of foods, um, the analysis of food content, uh, food uh, sources, um, everything that is gonna help us make processed foods safe, uh, make sure it tastes good and nutritious. Food technology is really this application of food science to figure out the best ways to process, package, preserve, store, and distribute food to the general market. And so a lot of the courses that you will be taking in the major will focus on these core areas. Um, so product development is one of these classes that you're going to uh, take in your senior year. Um, where you're applying everything that you're learning um, as a freshman or sophomore um, to be successful in this major. So this is really just a diagram to show you some of the core areas of food science. For our freshman students, if you're an incoming freshman, this is just an idea of what to expect for your first academic year. So this is a snapshot of our recommended four-year plan. So assuming that you start fall quarter freshman year, some of the courses that we would like to see you take are the general chemistry series and short calculus. 
this is essentially a science major, right? And so if you like science and you like food, food science seems to be the best option. Um, one of the things that I forgot to mention, just sort of going back to my previous slide, is that a lot of people seem to confuse this idea or, or they're not sure if they should take a nutrition route versus food science. Nutrition, like I said, it focuses on how food interacts with the human body. So if you are someone who wants to learn more about maybe eating disorders or how to um, counsel um, mothers who are nurturing their children and what some, where some of the foods they, they can eat, or someone who has diabetes, nutrition really focuses on how those nutrients can optimize the human body. Um, again, food science is more technical, it's more applicable and research based in that you are just sort of focusing on um, food science in terms of, um, you know, this creation, this product development of the food and sustainability and that um, sort of information. So I wanted to make that distinction for those of you who are, you know, sort of across between food science and nutrition. So going back to the food science major requirements, your first year is going to focus on these prerequisites for the upper division classes. So general chemistry, calculus, physics, and organic chemistry. Um, a lot of our upper division courses are only offered once a year. So it's really important to prioritize those classes, okay? For the junior and senior year, a lot of our transfer students will be entering um, in their third year at UC Davis. So if you are a transfer student, these are some of the courses that you would be taking in the major. Food composition, there's a lot of sensory lab design, um, biochemistry, and food microbiology. Um, it's very exciting classes that are going to give you some of the foundational knowledge of product development. And then as you approach your senior year, you're, you're really going to apply a lot of what you learned into these classes. So food processing, um, the product development course is another great course that a lot of students enjoy taking. And so this is really just a snapshot of what to expect if you want to graduate in four years or two years for our transfer students. So this is a snapshot of our um, first quarter schedule. For first year students, I recommend taking one or two major courses um, for your first year. General chemistry and short calculus is usually uh, the courses that you will take. Um, there are some placement exams that you will need to take, uh, the chem placement exam and, and calculus placement exam. Um, some of you may have AP credit or IB exams. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we meet with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, in the next few weeks. But very generally, this is what uh, your first quarter would look like. And so some of the courses that you could add to this, um, to the schedule is maybe some GEs or um, I know some of you may be thinking about that entry level writing requirement. There's also some really great first year seminars that you should definitely look into. Um, there's a lot of weird courses out there, um, a lot of interesting ones that are one to two units. And so we could talk a little bit more about that later during our one-on-one -on -one sessions. For transfer students, again, this is very general. Um, your courses are going to look something like this with food chemistry, the lab, food preservation classes, but each person is going to have a very different schedule because of the coursework that you are transferring from your community college may give you certain credits. And so um, we will be meeting with you individually to create a customized plan to make sure that you are on track to graduate, um, you know, within the appropriate amount of time. I also want to highlight here at the bottom that all of the classes that you will be taking for your major are um, that are required for the major must be taken for a letter grade. And so, you know, the standard A, B, there's B minuses and C minuses here. So all of those courses that you need for the major should be taken for a letter grade and not for pass, no pass. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about some research and internship opportunities in the major. And so um, what I recommend, at least for your first quarter, is to focus on that schedule. Focus on adjusting to UC Davis, getting to know your classes, your classmates and instructors, and really finding your niche on campus. 
Um, and so as far as research and internships go, you may want to wait a little bit, maybe for transfer students waiting until your winter or spring quarter, for, uh, for freshman students maybe waiting after you complete the first academic year before you start to explore opportunities for research and internship. So at the upper division level, if you're interested in research, uh, you will get academic credit if you apply for FST 192. So in addition to getting this applicable experience, you can also get credit towards your major if you decide to join an internship. Um, it's the same thing for the research study courses. Um, our peer advisor, Maya Han, I know she has participated in some group competitions for food science where you're working in a small group with your team members um, under the guidance of a faculty member that are going to support you in a food product development um, uh, competition. And I believe Mai Han has also participated in one of those competi competitions, so maybe she could talk a little bit more about that in the Q&A. Moving forward into some of the food science careers, these are just, you know, a few. There, it actually looks like a lot, but these are a few of the op uh, opportunities that you have available. So um, a lot of students go on to become food scientists or meat scientists. There's sales, uh, research, quality control. And so with your background with chemistry, biochemistry, it really prepares you for these pathways. And there are some students in the major who will go on to medical school or dental school. And so if this is something that you're interested in doing, definitely let us know because your academic plan might look a little different so that while you're completing the major requirements, you're also satisfying the requirements for medical school or professional school, if that is a track that you would like to pursue. Here is just a few of the companies that uh, will hire our food science students, um, Coca-Cola, Del Monte, um, Kellogg. There's a lot more opportunities available here. And so we will work with you individually uh, and collaboratively with the Internship and Career Center to make sure that you are getting connected to these companies um, and, and um, internships off campus so that you are supplementing your knowledge with some um, practical experience. Um, I use this website a lot. This is the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS.gov, which basically explains a little bit more about what is it like to be a food scientist, what are some of the qualifications or um, um, uh, certifications that you have to complete to be a food scientist. A lot of our students want to know, well, how much can I make in this career? Um, it's, of course, it's going to look different depending where you're working. California tends to pay a lot higher. And so I would say the average is going to be around 65000 a year for this major with just a bachelor's degree. And so the job outlook for 2018 through 2028 has a 7% faster than average rate. And so this is really something that you should consider as far as um, the job security in the future. Okay. So here I'm going to transfer um, the presentation to Mai Han to talk a little bit about student involvement, the Food Tech Club. Um, Mai Han, uh, are you ready to start? Um, yeah, it's just I can't really share my camera. I don't know. Maybe if I turn my on. Oh, I got it. Okay. Okay, cool. So um, I can kind of talk about the clubs that are under the food science and technology department. Um, we have two clubs. So the first one is food tech club. So that's kind of like for students that are just interested in like food science, like the in general. And then there's food science brewing club. So that's for all of you that are interested in brewing or beer. Um, you have to be 21, though, to join that club, so maybe if you're a transfer or if you wait till you're a junior, then maybe you can consider that. Um, I don't really know much about uh, the Brewing Club, but I can kind of cover a lot about Food Tech Club. So Food Tech Club is the UC Davis chapter of the Institute of Food Technologists. So basically, our goal is to provide food science students with resources and opportunities for professional development. Um, we have a lot of cool speakers that come, and most of them are UC Davis alumni. 
And we also organize a lot of industry tours. So some places that we visited include um, Jelly Belly, um, Safeway. And for those of you that are interested in plant-based foods, we've also recently visited Impossible Foods headquarter um, in winter quarter. Um, besides kind of like professional development, it's just a really good place to make friends. So we have a lot of socials and we also have cooking demos as well. Um, I made a lot of my friends at Davis from this club. Um, if you're a freshman or a transfer, I really recommend joining Food Tech Club as soon as you arrive. Um, because I guess as a freshman, you're taking all these GEs for like your first two years and it's really hard to meet uh, other students that share the same major as you. So the club's just a really good place to meet others that share your interests. And we all know that networking is also a important part of your college experience. So I guess in Food Tech Club, we can like, well, you can talk to like our alumni and other industry professionals, and maybe that'll help you like land an internship or job possibly. And also if you're really passionate, you might find yourself in a leadership position as well. So that's really cool. Um, I've been in Food Tech Club for the past two years and it's really shaped my experience at UC Davis. So you should join. My Han, can you also talk a little bit about your team project um, with the frozen dessert? Yeah, so this entire year, the project actually started in uh, the beginning of the school year, so in fall, and it's kind of like last year throughout the school year, so it's kind of like a long-term project. Um, me, uh, my team and I, we competed in the Institute of Food Technologists Student Association um, Prog Development Competition, so it's hosted by Mars Wrigley, and the point is to kind of conceptualize a food product, and then you would like formulate it, do shelf life testing, do sensory testing. So basically anything that a food scientist would do. So you're really like applying your knowledge from class in like kind of a real world setting. And for my team, we saw an opportunity to kind of turn a waste stream into a food product. Um, it's an ice cream that's made from aquafaba. So if you guys don't know what aquafaba is, it's the water that's boiled from chickpeas. So we thought it'd be cool to like combine food science with like, you know, sustainability. And that's how our product came to be. And, you know, um, during the entire process, you learned a lot about like teamwork and like applying everything that you've learned in class. So maybe once, some of you are like third years or fourth years, I really recommend um, signing up for these competitions. And we do have some classes that prepare you for that. Uh, there's FST 159, which, which is offered um, some years to help you develop your ideas and also FST 160. So you'll be working with professors to help you kind of develop a proposal for your product as well. Thank you, Maihan, for sharing that information. Um, again, if any of you have uh, questions about Maihan's experience, we could talk a little bit more about that in the Q&A. And right now I'm going to transition to Elizabeth's presentation for Viticulture and Enology. Elizabeth? Hi, everybody. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Maihan. I love learning about all the majors that UC Davis has to offer, even if it isn't the one that I work with. <laughs> so everybody, welcome. Um, welcome to my portion of the presentation where I'm going to actually discuss viticulture and analogy. Um, we'll discuss, uh, I'll have a slide on like exactly what viticulture and analogy is, but next slide is going to be a poll. So I wanted to ask you guys what you think if the grape is classified as a berry. Is it, you can answer true or false. Oh, there's the poll. 
Oh, I'm getting some good, good questions in here. It's looking like people are really voting. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, I'm still getting some answers in, so I don't want to share anything yet. Okay, it looks like you guys <laughs> voted. So it, it looks like most of you voted true. A lot of you voted false. And actually, I can safely share that I didn't know the answer to this <laughs> before I actually started preparing this presentation. But the correct answer is true. Grapes are one of the oldest cultivated plants, and they are classified as a true berry. So um, the reason why they're classified as a true berry is because the fruit wall is really fleshy all the way through it, and it grows on a deciduous vine, which means that the leaves fall off during the winter months, and then they regrow each spring. Pretty exciting, isn't it? <laughs> all right, so next slide. Thank you. So viticulture and enology is the study of grape cultivate, well, viticulture is the study of grape cultivation, while enology is the study of wine making. So you can kind of see how they go hand in hand, but they're not the same. Some of the program highlights um, are that we have these beautiful world-class facilities um, on campus and actually off campus too. You get a lot of experience, hands-on experience in the lab classes in this major. Um, we have, well, if, if you've never been to campus, but you go through the, the main gateway, you'll actually drive in, you'll see one of the teaching vineyards. Um, I always, it always takes my breath away every time I see it. I just think it's beautiful. It's a really nice part of campus. And you as a viticulture and enology student, get to actually study and like learn there. So that's pretty exciting. Um, our program is nationally and internationally recognized as well as our faculty. And it's a pretty small major, so we don't actually get that many students. And so the beauty of having a smaller major is that you get to know people in your major, you get to know the faculty pretty well, um, you get to develop those relationships early. I definitely encourage you to, to do that, to spend time with faculty, um, ask questions and build relationships with your other fellow um, viticulture students, just because um, it really will enrich your college experience while you're here with us at UC Davis, regardless if you're a transfer or freshman student. So a little bit about our world-class facilities. Um, we have um, a teaching and research winery. It's the Jess Jackson Sustainable, um, Sustainable Winery Building. It's actually um, the most advanced winery in the world. It was first to be LEED Platinum certified. So it's a sustainable building. It houses 152 state-of-the-art stainless steel research fermenters. And it has um, an additional 14 500 gallon fermenters for use in teaching that were designed um, with, uh, with an automated um, way to reduce water and chemical use. So you'll see um, the, the vineyard, the teaching vineyard as well. And then you'll also see the Robert Manzavi building as well here, which is another LEED green certified building. And in the corner, you can see the fermenters that you'll actually be able to work with. And we also have, oh, teaching vineyards. We have teaching vineyards in Davis, but we also have some in Napa as well. So that's kind of a fun fact. Okay, so core topics. So this is just a suggested four-year plan for students. And you'll see here, um, we have listed the viticultural practices, grapevine growth and physiology, soils and viticulture, fermented foods, um, grapevine pests, diseases disorder, wine production, sensory evaluation, wine stability, um, distilled beverage technology and wines of the world. Here's a suggested four year plan. And so I know many of you won't necessarily be starting as freshmen. Some of you will be transfer students and you, so you'll start, um, you know, 
with your VEN classes, the upper division VEN classes. And as Stephanie said earlier in the presentation, um, when you make your uh, Aggie advising appointment, we'll actually look at your transcripts and we'll see what you completed and we'll come up with a custom plan together. Um, and then just in general, some of the core topics that you'll be learning uh, are the prerequisites in um, then they include biological sciences, chemistry, physics, and calculus. And then you also can take some introduction to viticulture courses as well. And then you'll have some more depth requirements in the major. And then that will require more biological sciences, microbiology and statistics. And then you'll go into the viticulture classes in the labs. So oh, next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> so here is the sample first quarter schedule. Um, as you can see, your, your first year schedule, you're going to be taking some general uh, chemistry classes, maybe a math class, and then you can also take, um, you'll be working on your GEs if you're a freshman. Um, there are some entry, uh, there are some placement exams that you'll also be required to take such as the chemistry placement exam, the, the um, English writing requirement is a placement process that you'll have to go through as well. And then there's like a, a math placement as well. Transfer students, again, like I said in the previous slide, will actually have to meet and look at your, your classes that you already completed um, together, and then we'll come up with an academic plan for the rest of the year. So here's just a little part about research and internships. We actually have quite a few internships. It's nice that we're pretty, well, we're Napa adjacent. And so there's a lot of vineyards that are not too far away. And so many of our students, they like to take internships during the fall. Um, during the fall, if they wanna do work on a harvest, they might wanna take a quarter off. I definitely recommend that if you are thinking about taking a quarter off in the fall, especially since our viticulture classes, the upper division classes only take place once a year to talk to me because we probably need to figure out a plan um, if you wanna take fall quarter off for an internship. But also you can take an internship during summer quarter. And so, Summer quarter is a great time to actually get an internship work out in the field. It's a little bit hotter, but um, you can get some hands-on experience. And I always encourage students to think about internships simply because then you can get some hands-on experience within like the, the field that you want to work in. And getting that hands-on experience, sometimes you learn about things that you like, and sometimes you learn about things that you don't like. And I always have come with the philosophy that learning what you don't like usually leads you to the things that you do um, you do enjoy. And so uh, taking an internship, um, even we have a great study abroad program for international um, for like some students can go internationally and study about wine in France, Spain, Italy. Um, if this is something that you're interested in, I definitely want to help you um, just think about uh, that opportunity. And um, I always, uh, there is also a um, special, uh, in Australia, there's a special uh, study abroad program, University Exchange, the University of Adelaide. You have to be in your junior standing, but in this program students, like they, gain knowledge and all the, they actually, it's part of the viticulture, they fulfill the same requirements of the viticulture, upper division viticulture classes, and they do it in Australia. And so it was actually specially tailored for UC Davis. And so I think this is a really great opportunity for students who are in their junior year or senior year. Um, I really do think that this is something that if you're interested in studying abroad and getting your course, your major requirements completed somewhere else, um, that this is a good opportunity. Okay, so what can you do with your major? Well, we, we don't necessarily have a huge broad <laughs> um, 
like food science usually has like a really broad what you can do with your major, but we still have a lot of things that you can do with your major. Winemaking, cellar worker, lab technician, retail, crop researcher, field uh, worker, vineyard management, pest control advisor, research. And as you can see here, the, here are some of the famous um, brands and vineyards that some of our students have gotten internships or gotten jobs at. Um, also too, if you're, you know, many of our students, they go on to graduate level study in related fields such as food science, horticulture, agriculture, and environmental chemistry. Um, Enologists also can find, you know, um, lots of different jobs. They can be wine critics, fermentation researchers or managers, um, viticulturalists may find like, you know, uh, grower relations consultants. Um, they, I've heard of somebody becoming an agricultural loan officer um, in vineyard and crop, uh, crop related businesses. So there are a lot of different opportunities. And I think, again, thinking about what you wanna do with your degree, um, if it's just stepping into a career or maybe even further studies, it's something that I would love to discuss with you during our time um, together at UC Davis. And so next is our student organization, our student involvement group. We have a couple of different um, student groups. The most um, recognized one is the Davis Enology and Viticultural Organization, DEVO. It's not to be confused with the American Rock Band. Um, and the student sponsored, um, it's a student sponsored uh, organization. Um, there's immersion trips to wine regions. Um, there's alumni that come by. We have this beautiful dinner called the Winkler Dinner. And um, it's an annual event with donors, faculty, and students. And they have a beautiful sit-down dinner, and it's a fundraiser, and it happens every year. It didn't happen this year, but it will hopefully happen again next year. And I definitely encourage you to look into joining the student group. I don't want to take too much more time, actually, because we want to have time for your Q&A. So let's see what happens next. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so I'm just going to breeze through these next few appointments. I know some of you have questions about the next steps and how to meet with your advisor. So for first year appointments, we are going to start meeting with freshman students between June 15th and June 26th. Um, if you are unable to schedule an appointment through the appointment system, um, please reach out to me directly. You can email us at bf TV advising at ucdavis.edu, but I will also initiate that first communication with you just to make sure that you uh, have the uh, appropriate information to schedule appointments. So you may receive an email me from email from me first to get you into the appointment system. Transfer students, we will be meeting with you between July 6th and July 17th. The reason for that is because your transcripts are still processing uh, through undergraduate admissions, and we wanna make sure that coursework is accurate before we create your academic plan. So please be patient with us as we process. We will be in communication with you to make sure that um, you're being updated throughout that process, okay? All right, so these are just some first quarter tips and recommendations, but in the um, uh, for time, I, I'm going to just sort of skip through this. Definitely, we'll go over it when we meet with you in one on one. Um, these are some ways you can get involved with the Dean's College. Nora is here to talk a little bit about that. Yes, just really quickly, and feel free to take a picture of the slide if you like, but I know that we're also recording these uh, presentations. So Manners um, is a great way to get involved um, with our organization. It's known as Multiculturalism in Agricultural agricultural and natural resources. What a mouthful. Um, but it's an amazing, amazing experience. Um, in addition, you'll see the Career Discovery Group, which is a one to two unit seminar that we encourage all students to join. It's especially um, special for our college to have this partnership. And Aggie Ambassadors, which if you've been a part of the Future Farmers of America program um, or any Ag Tap programs in your high school or your communities, um, that's definitely a way to to, to give back to 
um, our communities and services. And then we have a bunch of um, information and we'll be sending out more information actually about how to attend our event. So you see study break and you'll see slice of advice where we have pizza, which is why we asked that question. Um, but um, we're also gonna sh share with you a slide that has our contact information. So go ahead and click that. And we know that you have some great questions for Stephanie and Elizabeth. Okay, awesome. so for our Q&A facilitators, are there some questions? Um, let me see here. What are some we have, of a, we have a good one. We have a good, I think we have one that Mayan can actually answer. Um, how do I join Food Tech Club? And then what is the most fun class you have taken so far? What was the most challenging in your opinion? How was your sophomore year considering you had to take three core science classes? Yeah, so to start off with the Food Tech Club question, um, in the beginning of the year, I believe the department sends out um, an email um, letting students know when our first meeting is. So at the meeting, you can kind of learn about what Food Tech Club is. And then afterwards, you can um, kind of join, like sign up for membership. So just look out for an email at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And for the most fun classes, um, so for food science, you know, there's like a mix of like, you know, those hardcore science classes. And then we also have a lot of fun classes too. Personally, the, my top two favorite classes would be FST 101B. So that's a food properties lab. It's like really cool. You get to like bake bread, make cake, ice cream and all that. And also learn the science behind that. Um, you would be taking that your junior winter quarter. And then let's see, FST. Oh my God, I forgot the code for it, but it's a food preservation class. So then we do stuff like fermentations and we do like canning and like make jam and all that. So that's also pretty fun too. You're referring to FST 50. This is uh, what students take fall quarter of their uh, sophomore year or junior year. Yes. I was thinking like FST 50 or 55 because I've taken both and like I just kind of get those two mixed up. But yeah, I, FST 55. I do want to get to some of the other questions. Let me see. Oh, Stephanie, yeah, here's a good one. Okay. Oh, Stephanie, um, can food science students take viticulture classes? Mm -hmm. um, yes, as long as you complete the prerequisites, right? A lot of the upper division viticulture uh, classes, and this is true for VIN students, VIN 2, uh, I believe this is the intro to winemaking course, um, this is only offered in the fall, and so uh, as long as you complete the prerequisites, you will be able to take these classes. What I advise is to focus and prioritize your major requirements first. Um, for food science, there is an option for you to complete 18 units of restricted electives, and these are courses that you could take um, outside of the food science department, so microbiology, nutrition, chemistry and so this gives you another opportunity to take classes that are outside of your major but will still count towards your major requirements. I know some people also have questions about how to change their major. Um, really quick uh, for UC Davis students you do have to complete your first quarter at UC Davis in good academic standing before you could switch your major. If you're thinking about switching your major right now, though, what I encourage you to do is to schedule an appointment with your intended major advisor to talk about the program and the requirements because you can start taking those classes in the fall, but you won't be able to switch, officially switch your major until winter quarter. Um, I have a question here. What happens if you failed your placement exams? Well, try, try, try again. Yeah, and um, it depends on the placement exams, but I know for the English language writing, writing requirement that you can challenge your um, 
if you you get your score right you get your score right away if you're taking the placement exam at UC Davis and then you can actually there's a challenge period so for some of the the chemistry and math placement exams you can try again too so if you don't succeed or get the placement that you think that you should get then we can discuss that yes and i would also say to really challenge the 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 wording of fail because um the placement exams are a really good opportunity to guide you to be um, in the best class that is going to lead to your best success. So we don't look at these placement exams as pass or fail. Um, this is a, a recommendation that's going to guide you um, and ensure that you're going to start off UC Davis um, on a successful note. Thank you so much, Honora, for pointing yeah. that out. Um, really quick, we have a few minutes left and I know I, I really breezed through the appointment system and, and how to schedule your one-on-one -on -one advising. For food science, I will reach out to you to help you schedule your appointment. So if you're having trouble using uh, scheduling appointments, where you're going to go is appointments.ucdavis.edu. If you're unable to schedule your appointment next week for freshman students, please reach out to me and I will help you troubleshoot. But I will be reaching out to you just to check in and make sure that we have uh, an appointment set up, okay? For and Vince so students, you, uh, you should meet with Elizabeth. Yeah, and I, there's somebody that I said for transfer students, should we not schedule our advising appointments until after July 1st? And I, I mean, it's recommended. If you want to, we can always, um, we can postpone your appointment later. Um, you know, you, I noticed that I had a couple of Aggie advising appointments already scheduled for next week. And if that, if you're a transfer student, we definitely can just postpone it because maybe we'll get um, more information about your transcripts a little bit later on in the month. All right. So it's, it's almost time for our webinar to end. Are there any last minute thoughts from the panelists, hosts? We have a couple of questions that didn't get answered. And I think these are all really great questions that you can meet on our one-on-one -on -one appointments with Stephanie and I. Um, you know, they're not anything super challenging. <laughs> um, you know, we can help you navigate. It's gonna be your first year here. There's a lot to just figure out and so, we really will spend some time with you during this like initial period to make sure that you're feeling comfortable, that you know where to go, that your major questions get answered. And you know, if there's something that we can't answer, then we will find the answer. But you know, our job is to help you and to make sure that you are set up for success. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. A couple of things too, um, we are also on social media. Um, so please, please find us on social media. We're here all summer long. We are so excited to meet you through your advising appointments and so happy um, that you all, the entire community stayed. We had 100% attendance and staying and so woohoo. And these are great majors to be a part of and you all are so lucky to have Stephanie and Elizabeth and me on. Um, my aunt, excuse me, um, to uh, help you navigate your journey. And don't forget, I'm here as well. So there's a whole team here to support you. Thank you everyone for coming. We'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs>